a Wikivide Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. U571, film. U571 is a 2000 French-American war film about a World War II German submarine boarded by American submariners to capture her Enigma cipher machine. Although the film was financially successful and reasonably well received by critics, the plot attracted substantial criticism as it was British sailors from in May 1941 who captured an Enigma machine from in the North Atlantic, months before the United States entered the war. The anger over the these inaccuracies reached the British Parliament, where Prime Minister Tony Blair agreed that the film was an affront to British sailors. The film was also criticised for portraying German U-boat crews in a negative light by showing them gunning down Allied survivors instead of giving them assistance or taking them aboard as prisoners. Plot During the Battle of the Atlantic, after sinking a merchant ship from an Allied convoy, German U-boat U-571 has her engines badly damaged by depth charges from a British destroyer. U-571 skipper Captain Lieutenant Gunther Wassner makes a distress call that is intercepted by American intelligence. The U.S. Navy has its submarine S-33 modified to resemble a German resupply U-boat, to try to steal the Enigma machine coding device and sink the U-571. Before the crew of S-33 receives its assignment, the submarine's executive officer Lieutenant Tyler is unhappy about a recommendation for command of his own submarine being blocked by his commanding officer, Lieutenant Commander Darngren. During a storm, S-33's boarding party surprises and overwhelms the crew of U-571. After securing U-571, the American S-33 is torpedoed by the arriving German resupply submarine. Dahlgren is blown off the deck and seriously wounded. While struggling in the sea he refuses rescue and orders the boarding party on the captured U-boat immediately to submerge. Tyler takes command of U-571 and dives below the surface, where they subsequently engage and sink the resupply submarine. After making repairs and restoring its power, Tyler decides to route the disabled submarine toward Land's End in Cornwall. However, they are spotted by a German reconnaissance plane, which is unaware that U-571 has been commandeered by Americans. A nearby German destroyer sends over some crew, but before they arrive, Tyler gives orders to fire a shot from the deck gun, which destroys the ship's radio room, preventing it from reporting the situation and revealing that the Allies have the Enigma. The submarine then dives beneath the German destroyer, which begins to drop depth charges. U-571's original master Captain Lieutenant Wassner escapes captivity and kills one of Tyler's crew, but he is subdued before he can sabotage the engines. Tyler attempts to deceive the destroyer into stopping its attack, by ejecting debris and a dead crew member out of a torpedo tube, faking their own destruction. However, the destroyer continues to drop depth charges. The crew realizes that Wasner, despite being shackled, is using Morse code to tap out a signal that the submarine had been captured. So they knock him out. U-571 drops below 600 feet, and is damaged by high water pressure. They start to sink, and can only reverse this by ascending uncontrollably. Tyler orders crewman Trigger to submerge himself in the bilge underwater to repressurize the single remaining torpedo tube. Trigger uses an air hose to breathe inside the flooded compartment. He closes the air valve to the stern tube, but finds a second leak, which he can't reach. U-571 surfaces heavily damaged and begins to flood, unable to fire its last torpedo. The pursuing destroyer fires with its main guns, the damage pins Trigger's leg, when he is beyond reach of the air hose. Unable to turn back, he manages to close the valve before he drowns. Tyler orders Tank to fire the torpedo. The destroyer is unable to take evasive action and is sunk. As the crew sigh in relief, Tank reports Trigger's death. However, the submarine has taken severe damage. And so the crew abandons it with the Enigma in their possession. They watch U-571 as she slips beneath the waves. They are eventually spotted and rescued from their lifeboat by a U.S. Navy PBY Catalina flying boat. Production 
U571 was filmed in the Mediterranean, near Rome and Malta. Footage, sets and models from the movie have been reused for other productions, including Submerged, depicting the loss of, and the fictional ghost boat. A non-diving replica of the U.S. submarine S-33 is located in Grand Harbor, Valletta. In the U.S. the film was originally rated R because of a scene where Lieutenant Emmett is beheaded by flying debris. To get A, page 13. The shot was redone with Emmett instead knocked overboard. This left the audience not knowing what had happened to his character. A death scene was also filmed for Major Coonan, but the effect did not work well, so it was cut. Critical reception The film was generally well received by critics, with 78 out of the 115 reviews aggregated by the website Rotten Tomatoes giving positive reviews, resulting in a 68% score, with the critical consensus reading, excellent cinematography and an interesting plot accompanied by a talented cast and crew make U571 a tense thriller. It performed well at the box office. The film's depth charge sequences, which produce rumbling bass tones below 25 Hz, are widely cited as a way of testing subwoofers in a home theater setup. Historic events The depiction of American heroics in capturing an Enigma machine angered many members of the British military and public. The Allies captured Enigma-related codebooks and machines about 15 times during the war, all but two of these by British forces. The Royal Canadian Navy captured U-774 and the U.S. Navy seized in June 1944. By this time, the Allies were already routinely decoding German naval Enigma traffic, while U.S. involvement in the Second World War commenced in mid-1941 with Lend-Lease. Tactical participation did not begin until after the attack on Pearl Harbor, by which time Enigma machines had already been captured and had their codes broken in Europe. An earlier military enigma had been examined by Polish intelligence in 1928. The Polish Cypher Bureau broke the enigma code in 1932 and gave their findings to Britain and France in 1939, just before the German invasion of Poland. The first capture of a naval enigma machine with its Cypher keys from a U-boat was made on 9 May 1941 by a Britain's Royal Navy, commanded by Captain Joe Baker Cresswell. The U-boat was in 1942, the British seized, capturing additional Enigma codebooks. According to Britain's Channel 4, the captured codebooks provided vital assistance to British cryptographers such as Alan Turing, at the code-breaking facility of Bletchley Park, near Milton Keynes. During Prime Minister's questions in June 2000, Labour MP Brian Jenkins said the film was an affront to the memories of the British sailors who lost their lives on this action. Prime Minister Tony Blair said, I agree entirely with what you say. We hope that people realize these are people that, in many cases, sacrificed their lives in order that this country remained free. In response to a letter from Paul Trucewell, MP for the Pudsey constituency, U.S. President Bill Clinton wrote assuring that the film's plot was only a work of fiction. However, David Baum, the British naval officer who led the boarding party aboard U-110, called U-571, a great film, and said that it would not have been financially viable without being Americanized. The film's producers did not agree to his request for a statement that it was a work of fiction, but the end credits dedicate the film to the Allied sailors and officers who risked their lives capturing Enigma materials during the Second World War. The credits acknowledge the Royal Navy's role in capturing Enigma machines and code documents from U-110, U-559 and the U.S. Navy's capture of U-505. In 2006, screenwriter David admitted that U-571 had distorted history, and said that he would not do it again. He told BBC Radio 4's The Film Programme that he did not feel good about suggesting that Americans, rather than the British, had captured the naval enigma cipher. It was a distortion. A mercenary decision. To create this parallel history in order to drive the film for an American audience. Both my grandparents were officers in the Second World War, and I would be personally offended if somebody distorted their achievements. Factual accuracy. 
The Kriegsmarine's destroyers never ventured out into the open Atlantic Ocean, but stayed in European coastal waters. During the destroyer's depth charge attack more than 80 depth charges are detonated in the film, despite the fact that they rarely carried more than 30. Furthermore, when U-571 is being depth charged, the German destroyer is using active sonar pings. The Kriegsmariner never developed active sonar, but used passive sonar instead. The German resupply U-boat would most likely not have been sunk by U-571. This would have been difficult for a German U-boat to achieve, as German sonar was not as advanced as British during the war. The only instance of a submerged submarine sinking another submerged vessel was in February 1945 when HMS Ventura sank the U-864 with torpedoes. German Type 14 supply U-boats or Milchgrad didn't have torpedo tubes or deck guns, being armed only with anti-aircraft guns for defense, and therefore could not have attacked other vessels. One character mentions S-26 sinking in a test dive. The real S-26 did not sink in a test dive, instead sinking in a collision with a patrol combatant, PC-460, in January 1942. Negative Portrayal of U-Boat Sailors The film portrays U-Boat Sailors machine-gunning allied merchant crewmen who have survived their ship's sinking, so that they are not able to report the U-Boat's position. In reality, U-Boat crewmen were known to have assisted survivors with food, directions and occasionally medical aid. Such assistance only stopped after Admiral Karl Dunitz issued the Laconia Order, following a U.S. air attack on U-boats transporting injured survivors under a Red Cross flag in 1942. German U-boat crews were thereafter under War Order No. 154 not to rescue survivors, which paralleled Allied policy. Even afterwards, U-boats still occasionally provided aid for survivors. In fact, out of several thousand sinkings of merchant ships in World War II, there is only one case of a U-boat's crew deliberately attacking the survivors, that of the after the sinking of the Greek ship Peleus. Historical Fates of U-571 and S-33 The actual, Captain Bioberleutnant Zussi Gustav Lussau, was never involved in any such events, was not captured but was in fact lost with all hands on January 28, 1944, west of Ireland. She was hit by depth charges, dropped from a short Sunderland MK3 flying boat, EK-577, callsign, D for dog, belonging to No. 461 Squadron, Royal Australian Air Force and based at RAF Pembroke Dock in Wales. The aircraft's commander, FLT Lieutenant Richard Lucas, reported that most of the U-boat's 52 crew managed to abandon ship, but all died from hypothermia. The reel was stationed in the Pacific Ocean from June 1942 until the end of the war. She was sold for scrap in 1946. Brought to you by Wikividi Documentaries Would you like to know more?